everybody, this is Atelier and I am Karen and today we are going to sew ponchos uh, with the summer intensives around the corner and um, shows, rehearsals, all sorts of things. You want to make sure your girl um, knows how to sew them. If you're a studio and you want to use this for your classes, go for it and use it. Um, I have made a very descriptive video you can always fast forward the areas that you feel comfortable with um but for me it's important that the girls know how to sew their shoes just in case they need having an emergency and they can start learning for the future um so today we're gonna sew the shoes and i'm gonna show you a couple of tricks um, of the trade of sewing um so we can help you sew your shoe better and make it faster and make it more efficient sometimes with little fingers um holding the thread and the ribbon is a little hard so this video is going to be a tutorial on how to do it in the most efficient way and things that are okay to just kind of um, overlook so you can be able to work nice and fast because typically you have to do it nice and fast and you cannot take forever in sewing your shoe okay so um, join me today on this video. It's going to be amazing and it's going to have a lot of tricks um, for you to do at home. Thank you. So for the purpose of this video, you're going to need your point shoes, your ribbon and elastic. There's so many kinds of ribbon. Make sure you have the one that feels more comfortable and is more supported to your feet. Uh, my daughter uses the satin. Um, she likes it very much, it has no stretch, so it holds really nicely, she really likes it. And uh, and then she likes the thick um, elastic rather than the thin one. There's a thin one and then a thick one. Um, she likes the thick, so you have options. There's so many kinds. As you start using your point shoes more, you start realizing which makes you happier. We are gonna do a cross on the ankle, which is what she prefers for her shoes. Um, and also it's more supported. She's very hypermobile, so it kind of helps with giving her more control on her ankle. Um, besides the shoes, you are gonna need a needle. There are so many kinds of needle out there and I just wanted to show you very quick. Um, when choosing a needle, it all depends on your shoe. She has, she, this one is a Russian point. And when I look at the inside of the shoe, this is a canvas. And because it's a canvas, it's gonna be really easy to sew um, because of the material. If the material inside was leather, it's gonna be much harder. So you have to choose a needle that is gonna be more directed towards leather. So I have a nice kit um, that you can get on Amazon. It's called the Handy Needle um, Assortment Kit. And it kind of gives you different options. And the difference is gonna be that point. So see, you have an up upholstery needle right there. That may be a really nice one. This one right here, I think it's, a, um, it's gonna work with leather really nice. All these ones are gonna work with leather. And it just depends on what curve you're doing. So you can just pick the one that sits on your hand best. Um, <clears throat> This one will be too thick. It will make a big hole. It's too thick on the hand. So I'm gonna just take it away, but I wanna show it to you. So when you pick a needle, you can see that there's so many different kinds. So you can pick the right needle. Between these two, one is shorter than the other. And when I look at this, if I had little hands, this is great because I can manage it really nicely. But for me, this is like too small and it's gonna help hurt on my wrist so i am gonna put that away i like this one this one is nice and thin on the top it's very pointy make sure your needle is pointy if it's a bulby it's going to be more of a quilting needle so therefore may not be the appropriate needle you need one that is pointy at the top pointy because it's going to go through that canvas like nothing also this one has a nice long thin body so it's not going to rip my um, elastic and it's also it's long and it's going to give me enough room for me to place my hand so I have chosen my needle and this is the one just in case I need to rip anything have a seam reaper at hand on your kit just in case 
<clears throat> if you struggle with your eyes, um, you can have a needle a needle treader. This is a little thing I'll show you. Um, I would encourage that you have um, a thumb thimble, um, either the antique style, which is hold and pushes. Um, this is a little more modern one. I really like it because it's nice and softer for my finger and it kind of pushes better. Um, when pushing through these shoes, oh, it's going to be hard. So you want to have something that you can pull that needle nicely. I love this one. It's like a little sheet. It's almost like a Dyson, but it has a little flower shape, which is cute. And I wrap the needle around when I'm struggling with it and it pulls like nothing. So it's almost like having a double thimble on my hands. I really like it. There's also this rubbery kind, which actually acts just like this one just like the flower Dyson style, okay? Both of them, all of this you can get on any of the sewing stores. I believe I got them in um, between Hobby Lobby and Joann's, I got this, okay? Um, you're also gonna need tread, and when you use tread, you wanna make sure you're using quilting tread, okay? I have it right there, quilting. This is Gutterman, it's really strong, really good tread. Um, quilting tread, it, it just makes it really strong on the shoe. It, this is not going to come off. Um, your dancer is going to be pulling at this shoe nonstop. Um, you guys are going to be using it. Therefore, you want to have a strong tread. Quilting tread is going to be your best bet for that. Or a polyester tread. Quilting or polyester. You're also going to need um, scissors. And you don't need huge scissors. All you need is like a little snipping scissors for the little treads that are coming and maybe one to cut the ribbons. Um, or you can just have the one, okay? You can have just the one. It doesn't have to be huge. This is a small scissor. I like to have um, little clips so I can hold the ribbon in place. Um, while it's being sewn so that way it's not going to move or displace it just makes it easier or you can just go ahead and put a clip and when you put the clip um, in between it and I'm going to show you how it's just going to hold it in place really nicely and your not your ribbons are not going to move especially when you have a young girl sewing uh, <clears throat> those fingers are small and it's hard to hold the ribbon hold the shoe and take the tread Sometimes that could be a little bit intense in the beginning. Once they get used to it, it's nothing, but in the beginning, it's just gonna be a little hard. So sometimes pinching it in place is gonna be a great solution for being able to handle the task. Okay. The other thing I like to have a little nubby on the side um, that simply holds the tread. This one I have little pins just in case we need it but here we are going to be able to hold that needle so while we are sewing I, i'm not sewing i'm going to put my needle down and i'll put it there that way your girl is going to have that needle there um, you don't have it on the floor you don't forget about it it's right there um, that can be some quite a bit ouchies okay i also recommend this one little card um this is my daughter's last shoe that she wear and just having it on the car on your kid can help you remember what kind of shoe you had. After you wear it for so much, the shoe is like all beaten up and in so many different shapes. So therefore um, you forget what exact number it was. And this is a nice way to pick it up and say, oh, this is what I'm using. For your next fitting, maybe you wanna start from there and then go from there to decide what shoe you're gonna have. Okay, you are also going to have something so you can be able to fray your, your, the ends of your elastic and your ribbon so nothing gets uh, fussy and crazy there. Um, and the last, a pen. Um, so you can mark your shoe left or right because once you use your shoe two, three times, your, your shoe is going to mold. This is either leather or canvas. It's just going to mold to your feet. It's going to create that shape. You don't want to move it left and right. I, I feel that it's going to um, be a little bit difficult. I'm a physical therapist and as a physical therapist, I feel like it, once you create that shape, let's keep it on that foot and let's keep it on the other shoe. Sometimes we have a left foot or a right foot that is longer 
uh, and it kind of sits in a different way. So let's go ahead and keep it left or right and have a pen so you can mark your shoe nicely. Uh, try not to have a big marker so it doesn't go through and bleed, um, just something that you can write very quickly and you can look at it and see. Let's go ahead and sew some shoes. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, we're gonna take the elastic and we're gonna put it on the length and then you're gonna go to the end, take a cut, there you go. And then take each piece individually. Don't do it together because it will change the length. Take it individually and take a snip nice and quick. Place it down, do the same with the other. Place it, take a snip, there we go. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna do the same with the ribbon. So go ahead and fold your ribbon in half. Um, in this case, we're using satin. So the shiny side, I'm gonna keep out and the matte side, I'm gonna keep in. And I'm gonna pull it all the way to the end, all the way, all the way. There we go. So I'm gonna hold those two ends. And let's go ahead and take a pull all the way along. So you can make sure they are nice and even and it's sitting very complete. Very good. Right there, I'm gonna take a snip. Okay. And of course I need four because it's two sides of the shoe and two shoes. So I'm gonna do again, fold it in half and snip. Okay, do the same with the other ribbon. There we go. Bring it to the end and snip. Wonderful. Now that I have done that, so I'm gonna separate my shoes. So I have two for one shoe, two for the other. Two elastics for one shoe and two elastics for the other. So go ahead and take one and put it on the side and we're gonna work with this. So now we're gonna place it on the shoe, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those stickers out and I'm gonna have my card available to put, um, put it there so that way I remember. Mm, that didn't hold, but we're gonna see the other one, maybe. Okay, that one's staying in place, good. See how I put it on the card, right there, okay? There you go. There we go, and now it's sealed. Okay, so that's it, so that's done. Let's go ahead and get start sewing. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over and I'm gonna show you here. You have a line that divides the shoe. You see it there? Okay, you have a line that divides the shoe. We are gonna place the ribbon and the elastic behind. So this is the front of the shoe, the back of the shoe the center of the shoe, this is gonna be behind, so on the back, closer to the heel than to the front, okay? So I'm gonna turn it over a little bit so I can do it better. I am gonna put a piece of the elastic first, all the way down into the shank, okay? and then bring it down. And then I'm gonna take the other piece and put it there. I want you to see where it sits. See how it's behind that seam, that doubles. Is it gonna, always gonna be a double seam? It's not like one time it's gonna be different. No, it's always gonna be a double seam. It doesn't matter what shoe you wear. Um, so you're gonna put it right there behind and I am gonna go ahead and get my clip. I'm gonna open it. 
Now maybe I have it open before I try, okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it through the middle and up. Okay, that looks good. There we go. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side so it can be done. So now, you go ahead and do the same. See how I'm putting it behind the double seam so it can be closer to the heel and it has gonna be better supported, okay? It's gonna have more support. It is okay that that goes through, okay? The reason is that's just holding. And as the way I'm gonna teach you is not gonna show. Sometimes when you take a little extra time to learn how to do it the right way, or at least you learn how to do it in a way that sits, you can do it really fast, really good. So this is gonna be done fast. It's just that initially to learn, it's gonna take a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin my needle on my little knobby here. I'm gonna take my tread and I take a good amount. I actually uh, pull my arm out. Mm, just about, okay. Like one yard length. And I cut that. And you can go ahead and put it through the hoop. Okay, I just did that. But if you struggle with that, um, which is okay, um, you're gonna take your needle treader, you're gonna put it through the hook of the of the needle. Okay, and then you hold place your tread through that. Hold and pull. And when you pull, but um, it's all done. Okay, nice and easy. Keep your needle on your strawberry there. I like to call it nubby, but strawberry. Okay, and I'm gonna make a long. So I go one, two, three, hold. Bring my two tails over, hold, and bring everybody over. Okay, and now squeeze and pull. There you go, perfect, okay. When you do that, then you, I hold a nod and I remove the excess. There we go, and you have a nice position, okay? That was nice. So one, two, three, turn and then hold. Now I have my needle, go ahead and pull to the end so you can make sure it's nice and aligned. And we're gonna start sewing. See how that stayed in place? It's gonna make it so much easier for those little hands when they're learning, okay? Or younger hands, it's okay. So you have a canvas, you're gonna have two fabrics here. You have the canvas and you have the satin on the back. Okay, I'm gonna show you. So when I put my needle, if you wanna have a nice, beautiful look that it doesn't show on the back of the shoe, you wanna go ahead and take a little extra time Grab the needle and feel that there's two fabrics. So you're gonna grab only the first layer, not the bottom layer, and then you're gonna pull. I wanna show you what happened so you can see. So when I just grab the one, and I'm see how that is kinda there. So I'm gonna take it through that, in between that, so I can seal that beginning um, piece, okay? Let me show you the back. You don't see anything, see? Only the center thing that we're gonna take at the end. So we are gonna go ahead and do it again. So I grab that layer. Don't worry if it's loose right now, it's fine. It's gonna get nice and tight. There you go. And now you're gonna start sewing through. So go ahead and sew it. I have to put it down because I have two fingers, so it just makes it easier for me. If you wanna seal it through every time, you can go ahead and put that there. And then I'm gonna go under the loop, pull and stretch. 
and that's sealing every single time okay and i go again pull bring it under pull and do it again and again let's do it together so go ahead and as you learn it's okay bring it through pull and do it again ah we got stuck in the other side it's okay there we go but it's looking nice okay and again feel the two fabrics try not to go through both of them just so you can have a clean look and you know these happen sometimes ah i got stuck there so now i have a kind of matted bunch so what i like to do is that i go ahead and send them to the other side i mean it's okay because i'll clean it up as i go along okay you'll see i'm not going to cut it i don't want to cut anything right now i'm just going to make it work when i get to the top there's something i want to make sure you know you have a pool which is this one that goes along the whole shoe okay and that's going to tighten or loosen your shoe so try not to do the stitching on that corner you're going to go under it so when i pull my ribbon over i'm going to stay on the bottom side do you see it there can you see i'm going to stay on the bottom i'm not going to go to the top i'm going to go to the bottom only so you don't um there you go easy pull that down and then i'm going to keep going and feel the thread typically you just feel that it didn't go through and if it didn't go through to the other side it's perfect okay so you keep going and again i'm going to the second the second the bottom line not the top line and again every time i seal just gonna keep going typically you don't have enough time either to just sew these shoes so you want to make sure you just get it done so as long as you're getting the sewing you know it's not gonna look 100 percent perfect in the beginning and that's okay and this one is actually not looking 100 percent perfect but that's okay because it is still gonna hold and that's the purpose of it so i am gonna keep taking those bunny ears under and so there we go so nobody's gonna see anything do you see how nice the having the pin there was because my hand feels tired but it's still holding nicely sometimes when when this gets a little convoluted here, I like to pull, there you go. There we go. There, there we go. There we go. When I look in the back, you don't see anything. What? In that big mess, right? But you don't see anything. So I am gonna go one more time around um, just to make sure this is sealed nicely because that some of the stitches, um, you could or you don't, you, it's your choice. Um, if I look and I just don't feel that it looks um, strong enough, maybe I'm gonna go around one more time, okay? Keep going. So this is a moment that is hard to push. I'm gonna use my um, little piece and I'm just gonna pull through that and then pull it out because it's being spicy. There you go. There we go. Well, I am going to finish. You don't want to have a, a, a thread lingering out. So I'm going to go ahead and take one and go under. Oh, I keep scratching on this. Okay one under and pull and then you're gonna go under the, the fabric and pull out and then I'm gonna take this knit okay 
So that way the thread is not gonna linger out. And I zip mine. So we finished that one side. Now you can go ahead and take that out and let's check it out. Okay. Yep, it's great. At least, you know, it's a little, you can see tiny little, maybe I went one or two times over, but you can barely see it. You only see the, the ribbon, so that's perfect, okay? Let's do the other side. So go ahead and do the other side. You have it pinned, so it's ready to go. Um, you may have to retread your needle because that's not enough tread. on the top when you turn around there's no sewing on the top do you see that because i do not want to sew all the way up because i will just get in the way of that pull and i don't want that because you want to make sure that you can pull your shoe tighten it and um nothing gets in the way because you sew them before you try you do the final fitting on your shoe you know your final not fitting but your final putting on and cutting everything out that needs to be cut okay the ribbon and do a last pull and this pull is gonna be to kind of make sure see how i took it out from the center so it's in the center that way nobody sees my stitching and I snip, perfect, so, excellent. Okay, see it there? So I'm gonna take that out, okay. You know, many people will sew their shoe different once they get used to what they want and what they feel, but this is nice and strong, quilting thread, see? Okay, so now we are gonna go over. Let me see, it looks nice. You barely see anything there, okay. Now we have two, and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So this can be tricky, so I like to turn it over. So I'm gonna kinda flip this over on the shoe. And before you do anything, you're gonna take your elastic, and we are gonna do a cross, okay? A, a cross on the ankle. So therefore, it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna show you. It's gonna look like this. Um, my daughter is hypermobile, so this is gonna work really nice for her because of the cross. Some people have done just one and it comes across like this. So you're gonna cinch it to the other side and that's perfect for their foot. Um, 
in our case, in my case, we're going to do that for her like this. Okay. So in order for me to have the right placement, which is kind of like the tricky part, I'm going to bring it under and here you're going to have a double seam or a seam in the center of the shoe. Every shoe is going to have this, every shoe, doesn't matter what brand it is. You're going to have that. I've seen a lot of shoes that she's brought home and, um, they have always that seam. The difference is going to be the material. Sometimes the leather is back here. And if the leather is back here, that's when you have to kind of check if you have leather on your shoe, which most probably for some will be, make sure your needle is very pointy at the top and not too thick on the body. So a thin and pointy needle is going to be the best needle for the back of the shoe. Thin and pointy. If it's bulby in the body and round on the top, it's not going to go anywhere. So don't even try that. Okay. Make sure you have a thin and long and pointy needle on your bag. So now I'm going to take this under and place it here. Okay. And when I look at it, I'm going to give it a little bit of an angle because it's gonna sit better on the ankle and it's gonna hug the ankle in such a nice way. So I'm gonna open my pin so I can be open this time, right? So I don't struggle. So I bring it over. Maybe I'm gonna put my finger in the other side, in the inside, so that way I don't struggle so much. And then I keep it where I want. So I'm gonna create like a little triangle at that corner between the shank and the seam of the shoe. And I am creating a little triangle there and that's the optimal position for that elastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin it right there. Okay. Now, let me say that before, when we got the elastic, the elastic was fitted to her. So they fit her ankle to make sure we had the exact length. So this is kind of like exact cut, okay? And again, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I have a little triangle. See how my finger is on the center side, closer to the seam, my finger closer to the seam. And you are gonna make this a second nature for you, right? Because it's gonna be nice. And I'm gonna have it there. I have my little triangle, I have my perfect spot. So I'm gonna go through and through and hold it right there, okay? Wait, excellent, there you go, yay, I got it. So now it's ready, and I would say, I recommend you do this, it takes one second, but just flip the shoe and look at it. How many times, let you go. And it is enough side to fit the shoe foot in, and it got it, get it through, see? And you want to make sure it's in the right position. How many times have or may you sew it in the wrong position? Uh, so many times you may put it wrong, but I think the more you practice and this technique of turning it over and look, it kind of helps you know that you put it on the right place. Okay, so now it's ready to be sewn. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go around and then over. And again, we're not going to sew on that upper elastic. Okay, so go ahead and thread your needle one more time. Um, I still, we need about the same length. I would say about a yard. That's the length of my arm to my opposite shoulder. Girls, and if you have any questions, just don't hesitate to put a comment on the bottom. I can help you, okay? Now that I am ready, I'm gonna put my fingers through the middle of the two elastics so they don't move from where I want them, okay? And I can keep them in the right position. I'm gonna start with the bottom so I can get my, um, let's kind of move that up so I can get my triangle where I want it. And I'm gonna start with the deeper corner, meaning the corner closer to the shank, okay? And then I'm gonna come over and go from there. Okay, make sure you grab the
but remember this is your ankle support so make sure it holds good if you're in a rush that should have done it but because i am not in a rush i'm gonna go ahead and go one more time over okay um but if you're in a rush that should have done it because the thread is strong enough i just want to make sure they last so much i meaning so long that she doesn't have to um refix or fix that shoe um in the middle of a rehearsal or in the middle of a class or anything like that now that's finished i'm gonna go inside do my final pull so i can close and seal the thread and i'm gonna say snip there we go all done for that so let's go ahead and take that out to look at it take it and it's nice good 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 very nice okay let's do the same for the other side okay you're almost done with one shoe uh, and again because I'm doing a tutorial it takes a little longer than usual um, you shouldn't have to take this long um, it should be nice and fast it's more like going through the task um, I just want to make sure that you know how to do it and you have something to come back to uh, watch this video as many times as you need. You can rewind and fast forward so you can be able to um, sew the shoe with um, with me and then um, you can do it yourself. So again, the last ribbon on this side. And I'm not going to sew, sew the other shoe in camera, but I'm going to show you the final product. I'm going to show this one. Okay. to seal my tread there we go and then go under there we go and snip off excellent okay so now I'm gonna take that off and there you go and you know it looks a little rough around the edges but it's okay because it's not rough really this quilting thread is very soft and that's another nice thing um you don't want to have anything rough on the ankle so i'm gonna go ahead and turn it over and check it out okay so i lift everything there's just little kind of shiny marks but you cannot even tell what that is especially from the distance and there it is we did sew the shoe. I would recommend do not cut this until the until the sh foot is in place, and then when you try when you try your shoe on, because then it will be tightened, and then after it's tightened and sealed, then it can be cut, but not yet, not then, not yet, because then it's gonna go inside and it's gonna be a mess to get out. So don't do that okay um and then you have it done so there it is there's your point shoe and i am going to sew the other one and i'm going to show you how mine comes up if you want to post pictures of your first point shoe um and and your sewing i would love to see those put them in the comments or if you're an experienced dancer who's been dancing for a while but sending her shoes out to be sewn and this is the first time sewing them just go ahead and put a picture too i would love to see those I'm excited and um, have fun sewing. Remember, don't cut this until you put your shoe on and everything is set and have your teacher help you know how long does she want them or not, okay? So let your teacher help you with that piece. Um, and once you learn what she prefers, then she can, then you can do it yourself, but not, not then, because if you cut it too short, then it's gonna pull up and your shoe is ruined. These are over a hundred dollar shoes, so you do not want to ruin your first shoe um, or your new shoes. Then also the ribbon, uh, my daughter puts it on and then she puts it around the foot nicely. And then when she has the right position, then she cuts the excess and then we fry it again, okay? To make sure it's nice and clean and it doesn't keep kind of looking like a spider out there, okay? 
um, so she always has a clean looking shoe, at least on the ribbon on the end. Um, so don't cut those anymore until you fit it and you know you have the right fit, okay? So there you go. Beautiful point shoes, okay? And there you go. If you have any questions or you want to learn anything else, about a sew something in particular of your custom um just drop me a message on the comments and i'll be more than happy to help you um, okay um we did a beautiful pair of shoes and uh, so if you um, have any questions or comments you want to make or if you want to sell me your stitching go ahead and drop a comment below so i can see them okay we're in the last part of the the elastic and look how beautiful those feet look in that shoe mm, okay so oh let me see um go ahead and get down in your little piece went all the way inside the shoe so you need to you need to get that out so now we're gonna finish by tightening tightening there you go okay go back up there you go. So we're gonna tighten. So I'm gonna loosen this, okay? And I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna ask her. Um, there we go. Okay, so go ahead, I have to, don't let them go, okay? So we have a nice position. How do they feel? Good? Yes? Okay. Good, okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna say, she said that's good, so I'm gonna make it a knot right there, one, and I'm gonna kind of do it three times, two, is that okay? You're happy with that? Okay, and three, there we go, is that good? Okay, it looks good on the back. Go ahead and turn this way so everybody can see. That looks really nice. So now we have to cut that, that's too much. We're not gonna make a bowl. Okay, we're gonna cut. How far do you want it? There, shorter. And we cut, okay. I am gonna fray that when she takes it off. So that way it doesn't kinda look fussy like that. Okay, like this one. Okay, so let's do the other one. And that foot looks beautiful in that shoe. Okay, there you go. Um, Okay, so I take that piece out. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, more, no more. So I'm gonna cinch it, one, and two. That's it, and then the length, same length, right? Yeah. Just about there, and I'm just gonna fray that after. Okay, let's do the ribbon. Go ahead and go down. And so she is gonna loosen her ribbon. She's gonna tell me how long she wants it. Let me show you why. Because right now, there is like a long tail there. She sent it there and she liked it. That's how you like it, right? So I am gonna bring them together and I'm gonna make them even like that. Where do you want? Show me with your finger. So she wanted like about there because then she hides everything else. And I'm gonna again fray that, fray those um, bows when she takes it off. Let's do the other one. And she does the same. Gonna bring it under. And what about we about here? Yeah. So I want to ask her because I want to make sure she loves the shoe, right? So when she does it herself, she will do it herself. But since I'm doing this video, she let me do it. So I'm happy. And that way I can, um, that's long enough. I'm going to fray that. When she brings it up, I believe she goes like this and falls, falls, falls. And then it, she brings it under. Is that right? Something like that. Okay, she does it. Go ahead and do it. So that way everybody can see how it looks. Okay. 
There you go, that looks better than me. Check it out. Go ahead and turn to the side so everybody can see. So you cannot see anything. Can you do that in the other one for me, please? Thank you. So again, she does the same thing. She hides the whole thing in there. And you don't see no crazy elastic or no crazy uh, ribbon sticking everywhere. She has a nice clean look. Give me a nice up one more time to finish. And she looks beautiful. Oh, beautiful. All done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for helping me show this. And um, thank you for uh, watching this video. And I have a couple of other tips um, for you. So go ahead and join me on my channel. Bye.